Hello everyone, my name is Peter Sharoshi. I'm the editor of the Drug Reporter website. And uh, today uh, we have a guest with us, uh, Anton Bashenko from um, yeah, European AIDS Treatment uh, Group, uh, who is now uh, joining us from Brussels. And we would like to talk uh, to him about the situation of um, uh, people who use drugs within Ukraine during this war and how this war affects uh, 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 the access of people who use drugs to different kinds of harm reduction uh, services. So this is a really terrible war, what, war what's happening. I mean, everybody is shocked, you know, to see the news. Uh, and I'm I, I'm sure that for you as a Ukrainian and you have loved ones in Ukraine, it's even more uh, terrible. So can you talk about first um, um, if, if 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 those people you love are safe in in Ukraine? Uh, unfortunately, we I I can we don't know clearly. So talking about my mom, she's in Kiev. She's right in the district where the first. The first bombing uh, took place. It was not even a bomb. It was uh, like a pieces of uh, uh, Russian uh, airplane. So in this this building, which was kind of destroyed by these pieces of airplane, it's just 200, 300 meters from my from my building. So actually, um, all now it's more than two weeks that people are uh, running between bomb shelters. And their apartments. I mean, those who can do, those who couldn't, or those who were not able to to move from Kiev to leave uh, Kiev. So my mom, she's alone. Uh, it's really difficult. I mean, she's quite uh, sick. She's uh, yeah. So it was not possible to evacuate her. There is not no some friends with the car, you know. So at, at, from another side. Kiev is the most defended city as a capital, so I think maybe that the probability to be attacked or the risk to be attacked or bombed uh, now is a little bit higher when you are on the way from Kiev somewhere rather than you are staying in Kiev at least last day. But we'll see. Every second the situation is changing. The 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 the, the more worse situation is with my mother-in-law. She's uh, outside of Kiev in the town named Borodyanka. Only last days you can see it in the news. Before uh, it was not very public, but now, uh, so last week it is occupied by Russian army, including uh, Kadyrovci, you know, this Chechen uh, unit, let's say. And uh, there is no electricity more than a week, no water supply, centralized water supply, no gas. Uh, no mobile connection, so it's it's almost a week we didn't hear, of, we, we, we really don't know whether my mother-in-law is still alive. So my wife is crying, my wife is here with me, but she's crying because you feel like you are not able to, to do anything, you know. Of course, we are using different communication contacts, uh, some neighbors, some groups of tenants in, in that town. But that concrete part of, of the town, so first of all, it's almost fully destroyed. And uh, th this concrete district is uh, occupied by Russians, so it's not possible for someone, it's, it's dangerous for someone to go there just to check uh, whether she is alive or what, what does she need. So that's a real problem. That's a... I'm really sorry to hear that. And if we can uh, give you any support, just let us know. I mean... If your family members are traveling through Hungary, we can assist them. Um, so um, let's also talk about a bit about you know the community of of people who use drugs. And if you I, are you in contact with with people from the community who are still in uh, in Ukraine, and uh, can you uh, explain us? Um, uh, because you know these people have special needs on top of all this war you know like access to ost or access to opiate substitution treatment of different kinds of services so so do you hear back from them like um, how how are they and how how this war affects this yeah, for sure so first of all i think it's it's uh, it's important to remind that i'm a founding member and uh, chair of the board of ukrainian network of people who use drugs so of course I'm uh, in all our 
communication channels and every second uh, through our network of regional representatives in all regions of Ukraine. I mean, we officially we don't have only in Transcarpathian region, but we, we still have the community activists there. So actually we have information from all around Ukraine. So every region, uh, every day we are checking whether we all, I mean, whether all our peers are alive. I mean, what are the needs? And of course they are given the... Uh, Mark of course. And they are given given uh, uh, some information on uh, OST, uh, harm reduction, and other needs. So, uh, if you observe this situation, how the war is developing, so first of all, we should we should uh, differ the needs of people who still stay in, in Ukraine. I mean, the people who use drugs and the number of issues with which they are facing with. So it's uh, access to, to treatment. I mean, some cities are surrendered, uh, you know, the healthcare or some cities are already occupied and uh, some uh, uh, OST sites, uh, for instance, in Kherson region, Genichis, Kachovka, Novaya Kachovka, Melitopol in Zaporozhye region, it's already occupied by Russian. So for instance, in Melitopol, OST site was, uh, uh, so all medications were stolen. So uh, thanks God it's not, it's not turning to the way of behavior of Russians like it was in Crimea when they immediately, immediately uh, put their loyal people as the chief doctors or doctors into these healthcare facilities and immediately uh, closed all OST program. So somewhere where even the city is surrendered or town is surrendered by Russians, the healthcare facilities and OST sites still working. So that's good. But, but, <laughs> uh, but the um, the uh, more important thing is that the stocks of medications are really limited. So talking about the all regions of Ukraine, it's uh, so I mean the central stocks have the uh, amount only to cover until the end of March. And we don't know whether the new supply will be provided. Uh, talking for, about certain cities or towns, it's from one, two weeks to like to one month maximum. So we observe already a re reduction of dosage to 50%, like in Kiev, for instance. So you have the same dosage, but uh, you are told like it's not for 10 days, it's for 20 days. So factually, it's like 50% less. Of your dosage a again. Some um, in some cities, or as I mentioned, in Melitopol, OST site is already closed. So the most I think problematic is for a clients of private clinic. So the, the because uh, initially I'm, I, I I'm talking about uh, people on let's say state funded uh, OST program. But as you know, there are thousands of people in private clinics, whether it's an official OST medical center, which is kind of relevant to, 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 to state a program, or it's just a cabinet where you can be prescribed with the methadone or buprenorphine very fast by prescription. And it's rather de detoxification than OST, but nevertheless, it's still methadone, still buprenorphine, and it's still people with uh, opioid dependence who, who need this kind of uh, medication. So they are in the most need now because people who are patients of state program, uh, at least they are covered by these stocks and uh, amounts of drugs which were procured by the state. So uh, all healthcare facilities who are a part of state program, they are not accepting any new clients, including all these guys from private clinics because they want to keep as much as possible medicines for those for actual patients of of state program. That's that's the issue number one. Talking about the um, and of course, yeah, the other side of the moon is that some number of Ukrainians, including key populations, already started to move outside of Ukraine uh, or inside of Ukraine to Western regions, and now Western regions are uh, facing with the burden of. Uh, crowds of people, uh, new, like new clients, but as I mentioned, they also in, in the risk of uh, uh, losing the um, uh, proper amount of drugs 
for everyone who, who who's coming, you know. So that's that's a real uh, issue for all of them. And those people who are leaving uh, Ukraine and going outside to neighboring countries like Poland, Hungary, Romania, Moldova, Slovakia, Czechia, Germany, even in Belgium, people already um, here. It's it's absolutely other bunch of uh, bunch of program uh, problems uh, with, with which people are facing. This. So. Yeah, talking about harm reduction, needle and syringe programs. Um, I, I just recently shared with you the first uh, situational report from Alliance for Public Health, who are responsible for the implementation of harm reduction programs. So as you can see, mostly uh, NGOs are working. I mean, if if, the, if those people are alive, I mean, in, in this city is not like fully <laughs> destroyed and fully <laughs> blocked by, by Russians. Of course, our NGOs are real heroes. And uh, they 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 really working until I mean until the, when it's until the physical ability you know to 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 work. Of course, the hours of work are shortened. Of course, the approaches for service delivery uh, provision is uh, a little bit changed. Yeah, we uh, we have even some innovative stories, and it's in story with COVID, for instance, when the big problem. Uh, unexpectedly turns to a window of opportunities, you know. Uh, so uh, Alliance like procured five mobile vans, specifically armored mobile vans, uh, which which used to go to Dnipropetrovsk region for a mobile OST first ever in Ukraine. I mean, two 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 vans already there, but additional five uh, uh, is supposed to be uh, uh, there as well. But they stuck in Kiev, and when you have such a good transport and such a committed people, drivers, including drivers from community, because I mean, Alliance recruiting people from communities as well. And uh, uh, now these mobile vans doing the work will for uh, evacuation of families of clients of programs, uh, evacuation of staff, family members and relatives. Uh, some de delivery of some humanitarian uh, uh, aid, including the help to army, to territorial defense. So it's really now universal, uh, you know, universal use of, of these uh, mobile vans just to save pe people's lives or to provide access to basic needs, to some food, you know. Uh, yeah, so that's how it is. Sorry if it's too much because... Yeah, I think that's extremely interesting, and I think uh, it's it's like very inspiring to see that harm, redu harm reduction workers, uh, whose first principle is you know to save lives, they do the same in in the war, so that they they try to save lives, and they are I think very brave, and we have to honor that and respect for all those uh, harm reduction workers who are doing that in the front lines. Uh, so, uh, is there anything uh, like countries from the West can can support uh, Ukrainian organizations, uh, or even the European Union or European institutions can support um, uh, people and the community in in Ukraine? Yeah, for sure. Actually, partially, uh, I was trying to address it on recent uh, call with uh, uh, DG Sante, where John Ryan is uh, a deputy director. Uh, been pr uh, present and uh, I, I I had some oral speech there and briefly addressed some needs, but uh, 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 the, the, I think that uh, again there are needs in Ukraine and uh, there are opportunities to support directly with some donation to uh, all key populations network. They already publicly uh, they already published their. Um, kind of needs or the bank accounts for this donation. I'm talking about all key populations, not only people who use drugs, because in Ukraine, every key population is represented by a national network. And uh, I already thank to uh, want to thank to all regional networks, uh, relevant regional networks who uh, already start to, to accumulate these kind of streamlines of, of support. So for instance, Yoga Europe trying to help to uh, Alliance Global or to cohort transgender network in Ukraine, for instance, uh, like, uh, I don't know, uh, where uh, Euro European Sex Workers Rights Alliance helped to try trying to support Legal Life Ukraine, which is the national sex workers network, etc. So 
that's what I already doing. But for you to understand that now is a problem. So now it's easier to, to help with the funding so that then organization can provide at least small incentive, small cash to the activists because it's a problem sometimes to buy something in the supermarket or to buy centrally on behalf of organization. That is why donation and funding is really valuable now. Um, another story is humanitarian aid more centralized. And of course, there was some concern even from our government to the lack of intention from International Red Cross or MSF, because uh, talking about centralized logistics uh, and guaranteeing supplies of life-saving medicines or food, uh, I don't know, hygiene uh, things, we need the support of uh, because even in you know if you heard in, even in the cities where Russians, for instance, like preliminary approved so-called humanitarian corridors, once the evacuations begin and once the first people starting their move, Russians are starting to shoot again. So it's unbelievable, it's inappropriate, but that's how it is. And uh, here we need the organizations with a strong humanitarian mandate to provide these guaranteed supplies of all these uh, um, things. The video you are watching now is produced by the Rights Reporter Foundation, a non-profit organization which is not supported by any governments or political parties. If you like this show, please support our work on our website, dragreporter.net. Make a donation today and become our supporting member. It makes a difference. Thank you. Talking about European Union, again, we can say thanks to EU and the Commission for this uh, recent uh, decision for temporary defense status to Ukrainians with immediate uh, residence permit, work permit, access to medical uh, systems up to one year with possible extension to three years. And we already observe how people are starting to use this opportunity. But in reality, the number of people coming, because I, I, I accidentally was in Brussels in the first working day after this decision, and there was blocked the whole like district around this building because there was thousands of Ukrainian refugees and police uh, specifically blocked because, yeah, it, it's... it's uh, um, so I think it should be organized in some uh, optimal way. And also don't forget about language barriers. So. Uh, there should be some proper coordination with the proper translation, I guess, because lack of uh, Ukrainians uh, know the English or French or uh, local languages like Hungarian, for instance, uh, and we understand that it, it, it could be a big issue, even if person knows where to go in the EU authorities, for instance, but she or he cannot communicate properly, and that's the problem. Um, so... Uh, also political, I think political uh, need uh, is, is, is also there. You, you, you hear our president and I'm fully uh, echoing him. We need to close the sky uh, over the Ukraine. I mean, or at least to have the uh, airplanes, uh, military airplanes to, 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 to uh, fight against uh, Russian in, in the sky because that's the, the sky is still is still the open area from where the bombs are coming and missiles are coming and they are killing our civil people. It's not it's not war between just uh, you know army. It's uh, long ago turned to uh, uh, just a killing of civilians, including children. So it's more than sixty children already died. And I think here the political commitment from EU and for, I mean to have this consensus from everyone uh, on the political level that's really important as well as to uh, speed up uh, all the approvals on the country level, because I understand and now I observe that after EU approval of this specific uh, uh, like um, uh, temporary defense for Ukrainians, now every country has started to kind of approve on the country level and they're making these procedures. So for instance, people who already need access to ARV or to OST, and I have these real cases, uh, including here in Brussels. So the person, is in the registration process because of the crowds of people and big queue of people near the registration center, she is not able to, to have registration already, but at the same time, she already has a need to have access to antiretroviral therapy immediately without interruption. So, so that's where I, I understand we don't live in ideal world, but uh, 
I mean, as much as, as possible, if you can speed up or provide the proper coordination so that can um, un unload a little bit this crowd of crowds of people and, uh, you know, they provide the proper access to medical systems for those who usually left behind. I think that's that's really that's really necessary as well as as well as funding and not only funding as I mentioned to like a donation private donation or organizational donation to uh, key population networks uh, to 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 support our uh, activists. Um, uh, for the, it it can be also additional funding for those EU local NGOs who are now dealing with all these numbers of Ukrainians. I really I really appreciate and I really express my gratitude to, to, I don't know, organizations in Poland, uh, in Hungary, because I know the, in, in Czech Republic, I, I know how many people already there. And uh, they, they, I mean, the, even the organizations who historically deal, uh, deal only with the, uh, like, access to treatment, now they're dealing with all the scope of, of issues, accommodation, uh, uh, refugees, registration, so all these, uh, like, uh, so, and I think they, they, they're, they're, uh, capacity is limited, of course. Their funding uh, is also limited. So I think that's that's not only direct funding to Ukraine, but it's a funding to support Ukraine. But Ukrainians who are in EU now or who's coming to EU. So that's so there are different sides of this, you know, uh, possible help from 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 Western Europe, from European Union, and uh, uh, certain countries. But actually, we have we have quite few people who stay in Hungary. So according to statistics, like ninety percent of the people just stay for a few days and then yeah, go to the west. And yeah. uh, the, so, so, do you think that most of the refugees and especially clients of OST programs and people who use drugs, they will end up in 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 the west, right? In in like Berlin or. Look, there is interesting situation because uh, uh, according to the martial law, which was approved immediately by our president uh, uh, in the first day of, of the Russians' attack, uh, at the moment, all men from 18 to 60, they are prohibited to leave the country only if they are people with disabilities or only if they are uh, the only parent, for instance, with for a child, for a little child, and they are kind of uh, accompanying this child uh, abroad. So there are just a few cases of exclusion. So mostly now you can see this demographic cut between those who are staying in Ukraine. It's mostly men of this age and uh, women with the children who are moving now, who are moving now to another country. Of course, some number of men is also there. But uh, principally, conceptually, it looks like this. So that is why um, uh, we still need uh, some. Um, uh, we still need uh, su support in uh, pr provision or procurement and supply of uh, OST medicines to Ukraine, because because some number of people will still stay there, and those stocks who are now avail available in Ukraine, it wouldn't be enough to cover their needs. So in a, in a month, I think we will start to observe the interruption, like a massive interruptions. So that is why I heard already uh, uh, that uh, the German uh, parliament approved some law with the possibility to uh, transport uh, narcotic uh, drugs out of Germany. So maybe they are, I hope they are planning this uh, supply. But uh, again, it's everything is still in the process, but we need to, 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 to do uh, uh, to, to make it fast, I mean, to, to, to do really fast steps now, because every minute it's somebody's life. I mean, it's not just a mantra or it's not just a beautiful word, uh, it's, it's a fact. So for, the, for, for, for those who are um, in, in uh, the, the cross the border of Ukraine, uh, mostly the most crowded now is Poland. And I think, of course, some number of people will stay there, at least because maybe the language barrier is the, le is the less problematic there because Ukrainian and Polish people, they can uh, understand each other somehow. And that is why more, more uh, already more than half a million already in Poland. And Poland is a leader among all the countries now who accept in Ukraine. So the last figures I, I saw about Hungary was like 30,000 or so. Maybe it's 
because every day is coming a new new number of people. So maybe it's now 50,000, whatever. But nevertheless, it's half a million in Poland and some number will stay there. But you are right. Some people using these neighbor, neighboring uh, bordering countries just for a temporary stay and then they are moving uh, further. Uh, I think the next, like the, 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 uh, the next countries, the wave of, of refugees will touch the Germany, uh, Belgium, maybe Austria. So those countries who are like a second line of, uh, I mean, if we look into the map, uh, um, yeah. But again, for people like people who use drugs, it's always a matter of how soon. If you, I mean, if you make a decision to move somewhere. You want to be ensured uh, that you will have immediate access to like everything you need. I mean, to substitution therapy or ARV or needle in syringe. Yeah, so that is where we still need some kind of coordination between partners from uh, Western European part and, and, and Eastern European. Uh, I don't know, maybe using this uh, opportunity, this interview to announce this uh, uh, initiative, Help Now UA, uh, which is uh, now coordinated by Alliance for Public Health, but uh, there are included many partners, including EATG, EHRA, uh, CEHRN. So it's it's many partners who who kind of first of all create the special database with the uh, contacts uh, of local NGOs, OST sites, ARB centers, and and and, and, and other uh, necessary uh, things. Um, but uh, the main, uh, the, the most important thing is that it's like a centralized coordination hub, uh, like using the uh, Telegram channels. You can you can apply using the Google form or uh, Facebook. For, so yeah, and the, there are already more than 150, I guess, uh, uh, appeals. Uh, so yeah, I think we just need this. Uh, Coordination and uh, again, because uh, mostly now it's women and children, you can imagine the specific gender oriented needs and also specific needs for children. Yeah, so yeah. Mm. you mentioned that um, there are many people who cannot even access food now and, and it's basic uh, things like water and things. If, if someone from Europe, from West, uh, would like to support these people, because you mentioned also like uh, donations to these people, how can uh, simple people do uh, that? How can, where, where should they go to donate? Uh, so, I mean, if you if you want to, if we're talking about common Ukrainians, uh, there are a list of uh, links. It's officially published by our Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So it's a, uh, trusted uh, links and uh, really serious organizations, which, I mean, you can be ensured that the money you give, uh, you send there, it will be used properly. Talking about key populations and uh, especially people who use drugs, I can uh, share the link for a donation to Ukrainian network of people who use drugs or Ukrainian network of women who use drugs. Um, but this situation, but now we're faced with uh, another uh, problem, I think, I mean, it's mostly our problem rather than those who send in this money, but um, because of the taxation system and the system of um, spending the foreign currency you receive from abroad, it's really bureaucratized and it's really more expensive if you accept uh, money to organization account and then spread in this, rather than if, for instance, uh, director of Ukrainian network of uh, people who use drugs, Oleg Dimoretsky, for instance, personally can accept some transfer using uh, Western Union, for instance, and then he's spreading the uh, this, uh, this, this disseminating these uh, funds uh, to, to to clients. That's how we did with the input, for instance. So, so yeah, it's it's more technical issue, but again, not to lose those valuable uh, support and funding on some you know taxes or in some bureaucratic procedures. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Anton, for being with us. And we will make sure that we share the links uh, for this donation uh, websites. And um, yeah, if we can give any support in the future, just let us know. Uh, glory to Ukraine. Thanks. Uh,